back everyone, Toysh is here, and I am back yet again to give you guys another fresh look, and today we are checking out some of the brand new McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse variant action figures, largely just the new singles that have come out recently. Starting it off with the new Wonder Woman figure, she's from the last night on Earth, she's got the helmet of Dr. Fate, Nabu, here is the barcode, and then of course you also have the new Capullo Batman, which is a variant. This is Batman with battle damage. He's got a new cape, purple underneath, which is really cool. So it's straight from the artwork. And as you can see on the back, you got some new cross cells. The new White Flash. You have the Jason Todd. A new single pack Green Lantern, Hal Jordan. You have the McFarlane Toys Wonder Woman. And then Darkseid, who actually may show up in this video as well. Pulled both of these from Target. So you can find them if you want them. Here's the barcode with Batman of Battle Damage. And then heading over to Walmart, we have the Suit of Sorrows Azrael. This is him and his Knights of Templar, kind of like Saint Dumas sort of outfit. Not from, as far as I remember, not from White Knight, Curse of the White Knight, I should say. He was largely in the red and the black outfit. And then you have the Red Hood Unmasked Jason Todd figure. Both of these again at Walmart. And here's the barcode for him. Now, McFarlane Toys was nice enough. They sent over the brand new Armored Up Dark Side. So we're going to look at him as well. And on the back side, all the Snyder Cut figures, everything you could want in that sense. So this is going to be fun. Sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is a look at some of the brand new DC Multiverse variants found at various stores. Ezreal, Batman, Red Hood, Wonder Woman, and Dark Side by McFarlane Toys. And of course, many twisty ties later, here's everything out of the box. Even Red Hood and Batman taking a spin on the old turnstile right there. But again, yeah, these are largely just repainted figures that you may or may not have gotten before for your collection. So I would just look at them, compare them to the original ones, starting off with Jason Todd Unmasked Red Hood. Not everybody's favorite, I could say. You know, oh, do you really want an unmasked Jason Todd? Just saying. He comes with two swords, one on fire, one without the fire. They're done nicely. They're painted in a nice silver. So I like it. It's cool. It's something different. But yeah, I think you kind of expect him to come with his pistols, which he does come with a crowbar. Old crowbar Jason Todd, a la the Joker. The reuse from the previous Joker comes with a stand as well. And then you have the Jason Todd figure, which I'll tell you this honestly, in hand, he looks a lot better. I don't think the press promo photos really did him justice with the face sculpt. I would prefer him with the domino mask. I think that that would have done a lot more for this figure in just sense. He does not come with the pistols. He does not have his gun holsters. Whether or not that has to do with the new Warner Brothers mandate of no weapons, or they just wanted to do something different, it is unknown. However, on my Jason Todd, he's not broken, but the arm comes right out. It fits in there. It's snug in there. So if you just leave him kind of just like this, it's fine. But as soon as you want to move him around or do any type of articulation in the arm, it pops right out. That is a huge bummer. So in that sense, I'm not going to recommend this guy. I'm going to have to end up taking him back or swap him out. Something to that degree. But to see him up against the original release of the Red Hood, 2-pack or the Walgreens, it's the same exact figure depending on which one you got. You can see that, yes, the original one has the gun holsters. This is my more preferred look for Red Hood. Really cool figure, totally dug it. I like the cherry red of the helmets, everything else. Looks stylish, right? Articulation probs aside, yeah, if you want an unmasked red hood figure, this is probably the one that you're looking for. With the new Suit of Sorrows Azrael figure. Now, this one is, again, nicely done. Can't say that I immediately think of Azrael in this costume, of course. But he's done nicely. He comes with the sword on fire situation that we've gotten before, like with the original release. Nicely done, silver paint, has the fire effect, you can slide it on, slide it off, everything else, has a little bit of gold accents, Christ the Redeemer on it, all that kind of stuff. Comes with a stand, and Ezreal is, is painted cool. It's pretty much straight from the look of the comics. It's done a little bit differently to kind of suit the mold. Yes, it's a repaint of the previous White Knight Ezreal, but it does look good. And he's got all the different paints. Now, it would have been nice to have the more bluish sort of white fire for his sword i'm just saying but as far as the paint goes yeah it looks good on him everything is largely painted i like how they did this right here with the red cross right there that actually works fits forms doesn't really break up the sculpt too much although i would have liked a little paint right there the crucifix just kind of blends in with the white unless it's a white crucifix i don't know but it's nice paint accents 
Nice articulation. Same exact figure as the previous one with his little Mr. Sinister cape right there. But yeah, you can see. They're taking the body mold. They're repainting it. It does make sense. It does work. I like the different elements of white, grays, the reds. It really does make him pop. And it does give fans of Azrael a different sort of figure. So in that sense, it does make sense. Although the original red one right here does seem to have a lot more paint apps to it, especially since, you know, the crucifix right there hanging down on the rosary beads or whatever is painted. But it works. It depends on if you like Azrael a whole heck of a lot to have him in the costume. Like I said, I think of Azrael largely as this, but being based on the White Knight, I largely think of Azrael in the bat armor. Perhaps they will repaint this one eventually to reflect the more 90s look from that suit. Remember that? And if you were wondering how he pairs with the White Knight, Curse the White Knight, sort of Batman from Sean Gordon Murphy's run, he fits in well, just like the others. As far as the Dr. Fate Nabu helmeted Wonder Woman, this is another one where you kind of have to go, okay, do I want this? Am I a huge fan enough to really want a new variant of this Wonder Woman? And I can honestly tell you that, yeah, if you were to get this figure, she is cool, she's done nicely, and it really is that sort of chase variant that a lot of collectors really go for. But to look at her up close, you get the stand, you get a nice helmeted figure. Now we are getting a Dr. Fate. He will be releasing shortly, but it's largely, again, like with all of these, it's the same exact figure down to the paint mostly. And yes, she does still have the weird knees, you know, where the gold goes into her knee and stuff like that. The backside, same thing, sword, holster, the cape, everything else. It's just the head sculpt and a little bit different elements of paint. But yeah, she holds her sword nicely. It looks good. Can't complain. Again, if you're a fan of Last Night on Earth, then yeah, you might be really interested in this figure. And here she is in comparison to the previous Last Night on Earth Wonder Woman. Once she puts on the Fate helmet, yeah, she goes from silver to gold. So a lot of different elements that were gold are a lot brighter. Even the costume itself is brighter, a lot brighter reds, more cheeriness to it, a lot more standout glow. It's the whole Dr. Fate thing, right? So in that sense, yeah, she looks good but depends on if you're a huge fan or not. To go with a much larger figure, we have a look at the new Dark Side. Now, I know people are gonna tell me all day that the previous one without the armor and all that stuff is his prior name or his previous name. He's Dark Side to me, not Alexis or whatever you're gonna call it. I know, it's in the movie, it's, I totally get it, but he's Dark Side to me. It comes with the same exact weapon, it's largely the same wash, it looks good, very, Overly stylized, but that's how movies go these days. Marvel, DC, what have you, has the stand. And yes, this is largely the same exact dark side figure that we got with the unarmored version. Nice blues. Everything looks good. He articulates well. He forgets what's planet. The anti-life equation is on. It does the same thing as the prior one. So he does look good doing it. I actually really do like this figure as a stand-in of a dark side that's more comic booky. But the armor does not hinder the articulation. So if you're wondering how it kind of differs in that sense, I still don't like this little piece right here. It's hanging on by a thread, so that's not my favorite. It wasn't my favorite for the unarmored one. But when you see them in comparison, yeah, same weapon, same look, same everything. A different head would have been nice, something to that degree, I think. Maybe more like glowing eyes, heck, even putting some Omega Beams in him, something like that, that would have been really cool. So, depends on if you want unarmored or armored. Now, we come to my favorite figure. This is really cool, looks like he stepped straight out of the comic books. I was a huge fan of this Batman figure without the different paints. We'll look at that in just a second, but I like the axes. And just as that guy told me last time, I forget your name, but thank you for that. When you put these two weapons together, you get the Batman symbol. And that's pretty darn cool. I definitely like those little Easter eggs. Comes with a stand as well. And this Batman rocks. Of all the variants that we're looking at today, this is the one that I wanted. I absolutely had to have because I really like the look. The costume grew on me. It's not my favorite. But he's got all the tatters and he's got the reds and the cuts. And they're all filled in this time around. And I love the purple. That is very cool. So a more modernish Batman. It's pretty darn nice. I love the tattered cape. Again, it looks like it comes straight from the artwork, straight from Capullo. He's got all the great articulation. It's a great Batman. Yeah, it's not the Batman that's like classic. He's gonna have bloody scratches and tears. He's got blood on his mouth. So it's not like just vanilla looking Batman, but it's cool and I love it. 
Yes, it would have been great the first time around, but I'm actually happy to grab this one and to see him in comparison to the last. The capes are different. Yes, all the little holes in the costume are all filled in now with blood. It's the same exact weapons, so it's kind of like, technically, a before and an after figure. But in kind of looking at it, I thought, oh, okay, yeah, the purple's the only thing that's different, right? No, the capes are actually completely different. So it is really kind of like a before and after, where Batman is normal, he gets to do a giant battle, actually gets all scraped and cut up and bloody, and bingo bango, yeah, you got yourself actually two different styles for this figure. An extra head sculpt, something like that, something different on that angle would have been nice, but I am actually very happy with how this one came out. And again, happy to have the purple. You can also use him for your last night on Earth. Kind of wore the same exact costume pretty much in that sense. Or you can put him with the new Wonder Woman with the Nabu helmet, yada yada. So they do look good standing next to each other. So that's going to wrap it up for my look at some of the brand new McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse variants slash chase figures, whatever you want to call them these days. I think these are fun if you are truly looking for a more variant chase figure. I think that these are something different. These are not necessarily ones you have to have for your collection, but if you're a completist, sure, why not? For me, I'm kind of in that mode where, you know, it was at the store, especially like Jason Todd or the White Asriel. So I was like, okay, these will be kind of fun to kind of look at and go over and kind of compare and contrast. The dark side figure, he's okay. He's relatively the same figure, but I think that more people will gravitate more towards the armored version. Wonder Woman's gonna be kind of like, yeah, okay. Largely, if you're a big fan of Last Night on Earth, sure, why not? The one that I'll recommend all day is the purple caped Batman. He's awesome. And watch out for that articulation probs, possibly on your Red Hood figure. I might have to take that guy back. If I find another one, I'll definitely be taking it back in that sense. So he's the one that I'm kind of like, yeah, he's the one with the most probs. So take your time, make sure you get a good looking one. But I am curious to know what you guys think about these new DC Multiverse variants. Are they for you? Will you be grabbing? Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse. And thank you again to McFarlane Toys for sending out the dark side to give you guys a fresh look. The rest, Walmart and Target it is if you're looking for them. That's where I picked mine up. So I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, I think we all have to thank Funko for the recent influx of variants and chases, and glow-in-the-darks, and black lights, and everything else that they're doing these days. If you don't want the variants, or the chases, or the different looks, it's not going to ruin your collection. It's a different collecting landscape these days. This is more about, if you want them, you can go out and search for them. And when you do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.